Hi, and welcome to Port Academy, an international podcast that combines pop culture and academics. We post a new episode every Monday. Where have all the good men gone and where are all the gods? Where's the streetwise Hercules to fight the rising odds? Isn't there a white knight upon a fiery steed? Late at night I toss and turn and I dream of what I need. I need a hero. I'm holding out for a hero till the end of the night. He's got to be strong and he's got to be fast and he's got to be fresh from the fight. I need a hero. I'm holding out for a hero till the morning light. He's got to be sure and it's got to be soon. And he's got to be larger than life. Larger than life. <laughs> Best intro ever. This is Sparta! History in movies. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Das war ein Befehl! Der Angriff steigert ein Befehl! What we do in life echoes in eternity. All right, but apart from the sanitation, the medicine, education, wine, public order, irrigation, roads, the fresh water system and public health, What have the Romans ever done for us? Today we're talking about heroes. Uh, of all the many great things that uh, the Greeks have given Western civilization, uh, heroes is one of them. The word hero also comes from Greek. To talk about that, we have somebody else who's also larger than life. And that is our uh, very own Greek expert, Galalampos Kefrikides. Galalampos Kefrikides. This. Who is a, a paleontologist from Greece, uh, living in Munich. And also uh, a long time uh, member of the show. Galalampos, tell me who you are. Yeah, hi. Thank you for having me here today. Hi, Galalampos. Yeah, I was first drawn into this uh, Game of Thrones. Which? What? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching that because um, I liked particularly the dragons and all these um, stories about the mythic beasts that um, are intertwined in the Game of Thrones story. And that's something that mm. I've always been interested in, um, mythical beasts and how these stories might have been inspired by real beasts or maybe even by fossils. Okay, so we're gonna weave that in into our conversations. Uh, that is going to be centered Rutger, around uh, four movies. Four movies. But first, who's who's speaking? I hear a third voice on the line. Hi, I'm Gil Kidron. Ah, hey, how you doing, man? Yeah, we're uh, uh, are going to uh, discuss this in the context of four movies. We have figured out an order that begins with the uh, original hero, pretty much. Heracles is the archetypical uh, Greek hero which means he is uh, blessed by the gods with the strength of a pretty strong guy. He's He can kill a pig <laughs> and he can clean a stable, just like that. Wow, awesome. <laughs> and he might also come into conflict with the gods. I think these are uh, recurrent themes, aren't they? Yes, and we're going to talk about the Tales of Hercules through the 1997 Disney movie. Hercules. How do you become a true hero? Look inside your heart. Walt Disney Pictures presents Who was the glad gladiator? Stronger than ten men. And having a devil of a time. His name is Hades, Lord of the Dead. I hate him. Trying to prove himself. This summer. Come on! Take off on an epic new adventure. I'm right behind you, kid! I'm way behind you, kid! Featuring a monster cast. <laughs> uh, guys... Olympus would be that way. A hotshot villain. I've got 24 hours to get rid of this bozo. And you are wearing his merchandise! And one true hero. It's the man. Hercules! 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 The myth! I'm an action figure! The movie! And <laughs> hey, two thumbs way, way up! Hercules! Well, well. It's a small underworld after all, huh? What happens in uh, Hercules the movie, real quick? Hades, he wants to take over the world, and the prophecy, sa prophecy says that only Hercules can stop him, so he sends him to live uh, with humans, and then at the end he saves the world. Great. 
Uh, next film is an uh, epic film from 1963, Jason, Jason and, and the Argonauts. Argonauts. The classic story of an epic voyage that has been told and retold since the birth of Western civilization, now presented on the screen for the first time. Pull! Pull! Do your heart crack and your back break! Jason and his band of Argonauts, the mightiest warriors the world of adventure has ever known in search of the fabulous magic golden fleece. Where will you find this miracle? I have heard there is a tree at the end of the world with a fleece of gold hanging in its branches. Here is the magnificent excitement of that legendary time when men like gods and gods like men lived and loved violently. Uh, stop motion uh, extravaganza. Stop motion extravaganza. He's on a quest from the gods. Mm -hmm. They help him out. What's, what's the mission? He needs to recover some uh, fleece, mm. some magical uh, artifact. Uh, yeah, and I didn't like the movie at all. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. But, uh, but I think that you guys did, so that will be. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that one. Ah. Uh, third movie, it's a movie that I like more and more every time I watch it. Uh, Troy, I used to hate it. Yeah, yeah. Troy is really uh, the, the Champions League of uh, Greek heroes. Nearly three thousand years ago. The passion for one woman ignited the greatest battle ever fought for love. I want her back. Will you go to war with me, brother? We're sending the largest fleet that ever sailed. We need the greatest warrior. Achilles can't be controlled. Be careful, King of Kings. First, you need the victory. No son of Troy will ever submit to a foreign ruler. Then every son of Troy shall die. We will be together in this world or the next. Immortality! Yeah, wh why are you liking it more and more? We're now getting more into ancient history, just like the space, the headspace. So I just like ignore all the faults that are clearly there. I just uh, I'm, I'm able to enjoy more all the historical and mythical uh, things in the movie. What what happens in the movie, Troy? They attack Troy. Uh, they put a horse there. It's not a Trojan horse. It's a Greek horse. I don't know why they call it a Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. And then they burn the city. Achilles, the hero, gets uh, shot in the heel and dies. Yeah. And then the Trojans go on to be Romans. Am I right? Did I understand the references correctly at the end? Yeah, uh, it, yeah. it has to do with them. Yeah. What's your name? Aeneas. Do you know how to use a sword? Yes. The sword of Troy. As long as it remains in the hands of a Trojan, our people have a future. Protect them, Aeneas. Find them a new home. I will. And uh, final movie, and first heroine, last but not least. Uh, another good movie and uh, uh, played by my future ex-girlfriend uh, Wonder Woman <laughs> I used to want to save the world this beautiful place but the closer you get the more you see the great darkness within What is your mission? To stop the war. What war? The war to end all wars. Weapons far deadlier than you can ever imagine. It is our sacred duty to defend the world. And it's what I'm going to do. Ah, uh, Gal Gadot. Oh, is she? Okay. Uh, awesome person. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she should be like regarded as the Israeli Michael Jordan. Like, a, like an Israeli person yes. who is now starring in a superhero movie franchise. That's insane. That's insane. And it's, this is the 2017 film. What happens? Uh, it's the origin story of Wonder Woman. What, what happens, actually? Uh, she's on the, the island. Uh, Harampos, the name of the island, please. Uh, Semiskira. Semiskira. And she's like uh, part of this uh, um, uh, mystical uh, army. And it's set during World War One, and then she believes that uh, Hades is the one who is orchestrating. Uh, no, it's Ares, the god of war, that's orchestrating the whole thing. 
and then she beats him and then uh, peace on earth yay and because after yes. the first world war there was no more war yeah that problem was, solved yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's why it's called the first world war. I think you could also just call it the last <laughs> world war. It was just that was that was the one, the only one that was ever happened. <laughs> and uh, there is also another film of Wonder Woman, which came out uh, very recently. Yeah, we can talk about that one too. Yeah, I watched also that, and uh, it was really interesting. A lot of people didn't like it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I also enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we can talk about that as well. So Hercules. So Hercules. Long ago, in the faraway land of ancient Greece, there was a golden age of powerful gods and extraordinary heroes. And the greatest and strongest of all these heroes was the mighty Hercules. But what is the measure of a true hero? Now, that is what our story Will is about. you listen to him? He's making this story sound like some Greek tragedy. Lighten up, dude. We'll take it from here, darling. You go, girl. Okay, so Hercules is uh, like a superhuman for uh, a Superman of ancient Greeks, because not only he's very strong, but he's also very clever. Uh, several of his labors, he can solve these uh, through his brains. He's also many other things. He's a warlord. He doesn't. Um, go about his labors alone, but uh, very frequently he has companions. Uh, he wages war against uh, other people. He is involved in um, uh, the wars of all these uh, Greek cities. He um, also meets a lot of women in these adventures, and he fathers a lot of children. Is he a good guy? <laughs> That's a good question. So. The meaning of hero in ancient Greece was not that of a good guy, not as we know it from uh, modern comic book heroes. Uh, heroes in ancient Greece were cool people, people <laughs> whose name would uh, live on forever, but not necessarily very good. So Heracles, for example, has a very bad temper whenever someone uh, tells him something he doesn't like, opposes him. Uh, he kills them. That's what he does. Uh, he started his career when he was a teenager. He was taking music lessons. Okay. And uh, you would think that uh, you know, music, they say, appeases even the wildest beast. But one day, uh, his uh, teacher was not there. He had a substitute teacher. That teacher wanted to teach him something different. Hercules didn't want, then maybe he beat him, the teacher, Hercules. <laughs> So then uh, Hercules did the only thing uh, he could think of. He uh, took his lyre and then he um, hit with that uh, his teacher on the head and killed him. Uh, it's only the substitute teacher, though. <laughs> yeah. don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> it, re it reminds me of this one time that uh, there, was, uh, there were reports that uh, two people were, uh, were suing uh, Mike Tyson because he beat them up after they mocked him in an elevator. And I was like, mm -hmm. they were with Mike Tyson in an elevator and they mocked him <laughs> and then they got their asses kicked. That should be legal. So who are those people who keep uh, antagonizing Hercules after he killed <laughs> all the people before? Why are you doing it? Thanks, son. When old Penelope twisted her ankle back there, I thought we were done for. No problem, Pop. Uh, don't, don't, don't unload just yet. First, I have to finagle with Phidias. Okay. <sighs> Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Penelope. Now, Hercules, this time, please, just... I know, I know. Stay by the cart. <sighs> That's my boy. He gets sent to, to, to her ship because he's very strong and uh, obviously he doesn't fit uh, with the society. And we see that also in the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then uh, he kills this uh, lion mm -hmm. and uh, he also gets married to Megara. Megara? Uh, Megara is um, the lady in the film. Ah. Yeah. So this happens at the very beginning of uh, Hercules' story. Mm. But Hera hates him. Hera is the, she's the wife of Zeus, the father of all gods. Okay. Hera hates him because... Um, he is the son of Zeus, so Zeus took the form of um, the husband of the mother of Hercules. 
it's it's complicated you know family situation in ancient greece this guy um, amphitryon um, I, uh... yes exactly exactly yeah in the movie they made him as to be like an adoptive father like they were ab- adoptive uh, parents to mm-hmm. Hercules in the mm-hmm. movie okay uh yeah so um he has sex with her and um then hercules is born and Hera Hera doesn't like it so he's always very pissed when um Zeus has sex with other women, which is very frequently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not uh, as much uh, the family man as he is portrayed in the Disney film. Uh, Zeus gets around. <laughs> it gets worse, but we'll get there. So the thing is that Hera makes him um, mad, makes him crazy, and he mm. kills his uh, children. Oh. And uh, so this is what kickstarts kick the whole story, because now Hercules needs to atone. And this is when an oracle tells him that uh, you need to go to your um, cousin, King uh, Everseus, and uh, he will set you upon some tasks and you have to complete them and then you will be forgiven. So this is how this whole thing starts. Who has to forgive him? <laughs> Gods? Fate? Yeah, but no, like no, no specific god or something. Uh, not, not exactly, okay. no. Yahweh, Yahweh. He has to, he has to atone. Yeah, to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Through his works. It can be Jesus. Yeah, yeah. The the gods are obviously different in the Greek uh, in the Greek world. They're not uh, really moral yeah. in that sense. They're just like uh, eternal uh, living kind of badasses <laughs> who, who do what. But it's but, but it's weird. It's weird that they still had to have this amorphous deity mm-hmm. that is moral, that he has to atone. Not any specific god of the pantheon, something. Uh, so it can be Jesus. Let's, uh, let's well, there's Jesus. kind of this uh, idea of uh, sort of a natural order that you might upset, uh, a kind of fate, and yeah. even the gods themselves can kind of cross those lines and and get in trouble over that, right? Yeah, exactly. Huh? I'll find Philoctetes, become a true hero. That's the spirit. I won't let you down, Father. <laughs> Good luck, son. So uh, he goes to Everestheus and um, so the king tells him that you have to complete 10 labors, 10, not 12. Yeah. So first is the Nemean lion, uh, which is a very strong lion. So lions existed in Greece and Europe uh, back mm. then. And we actually find their fossils in, for example, we uh, investigate a cave in northern Greece. And I was partially involved in that, uh, where we find in this cave, cave bears, uh, hyenas, cave lions from the Ice Age. Wow. Yeah. So wow. the Nemean lion has a very tough pelt that cannot be pierced by any weapon. And uh, what he does is to, well, basically strangle him. And uh, then because uh, it is so, it's hide is so thick that he cannot um, skin it as any other normal animal, uh, he thinks to use its own claws. So he takes this pelt and uh, ever since he wears that pelt, and this is very characteristic of him. So if you see depictions of Hercules, he has this pelt around him and this is the Nemean lion. Yeah, that's the branding of uh, of Heracles, Hercules. We're using these two names, uh, uh, like Disney uses Hercules. Can you say a little bit about why we have multiple names for the same person here? Uh, we also have um, uh, another name. Uh, so when he was born, he was known by another name. But after he killed his children, then the oracle told him, told him that from now on you will be known as Heracles. Uh, which means uh, glory to Hera. So uh, this seems to be sort of to, to appease Hera mm. because he told me that you would bring glory to Hera. So Heracles is the Greek name, Heracles, as we would uh, say it in modern Greek. And uh, Hercules is the Latin pronunciation of that. One thing that I find uh, interesting, in the, that I found interesting in the movie is like his portrayal as like a pop mm-hmm. culture icon. I was wondering, like, it seems pretty accurate. Like, those heroes, they were, like, uh, idols of a lot of uh, people living around that area for a long, long time. But they were worshipped. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, there were hero cults in uh, different uh, cities. Like, there were some cities that had kind of a Heracles cult, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Like they had figurines? For example, yeah. Ancient Greeks, uh, they had these local heroes. 
and he also had these great heroes with a greater appeal and uh, Heracles uh, was um, if not the most famous one of the most famous uh, heroes worshipped around Greece and he was also sort of a demigod mm -hmm. so after he died he was made into a demigod and he lived in uh, Olympus mm. so not like the movie ends yeah. where he decides to stay on earth father this is the moment I've always dreamed of but a life without Meg even an immortal life would be empty I I wish to stay on earth with her I finally know where I belong yeah I guess, and, and in the in the story the original story or stories uh, does his wife human wife come with him to Olympus or oh no 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 not at all so uh, <laughs> Megara he completes this uh, 12 uh, labors and in the film we see uh, some of these not uh, many uh, mostly they have to do with uh, defeating uh, beasts and um, also cleaning stables <laughs> mm -hmm. that is another story uh, or stealing stuff stealing was also something that Greek heroes did a lot as we will see later in uh, Zation and uh, at the very end of that when he completes all that he decides that my marriage to Megara is not working <laughs> So what he does is that he passes on Megara to his uh, charioteer and uh, nephew and uh, he tells him, uh, here she is, she's now your wife, I'm gonna find another wife. I wonder why they changed it in the Disney version. <laughs> Sounds really... I prefer that version. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that I find pretty interesting is that a lot of these heroes travel around in the Eastern Mediterranean mm -hmm. and also in the Black Sea um uh, but i guess they kind of have like local areas where they were where they were especially popular do you know a little bit like where that might have been in in modern greece or in the larger area do you know okay so all of these uh, myths supposedly take place in a, in a time of uh, heroes in a time where more things were possible so it's not the time when greeks start uh, writing down a lot of their history and their historiography uh, but these are all events that happened in a past era mm -hmm. uh, with everything was bigger everything was possible the humans were even bigger that was a fundamental belief of ancient Greeks and this is why for example when they found uh, large bones they usually thought that these must belong to some heroes or gods or giants uh, when we excavate in uh, northern Greece with the uh, Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, we excavate in um, uh, Palini. Uh, this is a peninsula in Halkidiki near Thessaloniki. So the myth says that uh, there the gods fought the giants and the earth is red from their blood and you can see their bones. And indeed, when we excavate there, we excavate this uh, red sediment and we find um, these large bones of uh, mastodons these are what's that these are ancient uh, relatives of uh, elephants and uh, large uh, bovids and giraffes so this was a time this was several million years ago mm. uh, when uh, greece resembled more uh, savanna like mm. environment wow so it is believed that um, ancient greeks saw all these um, bones and they thought that they must have belonged to humans who were very different from them. In an age of heroes, which is, I guess, kind of in a in a in a chaotic past, isn't it? Uh, Hercules or Heracles also features in this narrative of how he sired a whole lineage of the Heracleids, mm -hmm. who at some point in a time of great chaos, which is kind of the late Bronze Age collapse. Uh, reappeared and sort of imposed a new uh, order and some of the city-states in the Iron Age kind of traced themselves also back to these Heracleids who, who, who came and uh, restore order. So, for example, Sparta uh, claims that uh, they uh, descended from uh, Heracles, right? Yeah, like a lot of um, these ancient Greek cities uh, claim that they were founded by uh, one mythological person or the other. For example, uh, Heracles' labors take place uh, before the Trojan War. 
Mm. We know that the Trojan War, uh, like the historical event, must have took place sometime uh, in the 12th century. Mm. BC. So mythologically, the Greeks must have placed these events before that. And, and that is kind of a convenient, uh, or it's, it's logical that they would place these mythical events kind of before that, because then at around that time, there's this complete collapse of, of the order and of the old uh, uh, palace economies. And, uh, you know, a lot of records and things get lost. So it's, it's convenient to place, mm-hmm. place the hero there. In, in kind of the same way, like there are some parallels, for example, with the King Arthur uh, myth, right? He's also the son of a uh, union where the father is actually somebody else dressed up, like uh, Uther Pendragon uh, changes shape and then uh, sires uh, mm. King Arthur and then King Arthur goes mm. on to restore order basically at the time of the collapse of the Roman uh, occupation of Britain. So again, this uh, kind of period of anarchy where you can easily place these heroes who uh, yeah that's something that is something that uh, ancient Greeks uh, thought as well because for example they saw these uh, mighty walls in uh, Mycenae this was uh, an ancient uh, center um, very ancient so that was uh, back in the Bronze Age and uh, they saw these huge boulders and they couldn't believe that it was uh, humans who built that so they called these the Cyclopean walls. They thought it was the work of uh, Cyclops. Which, by the way, do you want to tell, tell the story about uh, uh, the bones of the Cyclops? <laughs> yeah, it's a nice story. So when I started uh, uh, my career as a paleontologist, I started with uh, elephants. And um, I studied the skeleton of uh, an elephant. And uh, the th- one thing that uh, really um, made the impression on me when you see the skull of an elephant is that they have this big hole right at the middle of their skull Uh and uh, my first reaction when I saw that was that well that must have been uh, where its uh, eyes would have been Uh, but of course it wasn't this is uh, where the trunk comes in so Uh all these big nose and the eyes are more to the side and this is uh, possibly why the ancient Greeks, where they saw these skulls and they thought that uh, this was the skull of a cyclops, of a one-eyed, huge human. (laughs) And by the way, not necessarily enormously huge, because there was also kind of smallish elephants on different islands, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, the uh, Polyphemus, the one uh, that um, Odysseus blinded, he lives on uh, an island in a cave. And uh, we know from the modern paleontological research that we find elephant bones in caves. And these are dwarf mm-hmm. elephants. So they were not like, they came from these uh, big elephants and mammoths that uh, live in mainland Greece at the time. But uh, uh, they became smaller because the resources on these islands uh, were not as abundant. So evolution favored those smaller individuals and you ended up with um, elephants well, not more, much higher than uh, one meter, one and a half. Nah. Wow. Yeah. No. Wow, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, there's this island effect where uh, big animals get smaller and small animals get bigger. So, for example, the dodo was a very big bird, but actually descended from pigeons. But on, on islands, the smaller animals get kind of fatter. And, and that's weird. Yeah, there's this. Big ones get smaller, but the big elephants got small hippos also, for example. Yeah, small hippos. Actually, there was in uh, Cyprus, they found the bones of... Um, so they found the, some bones. And um, until um, several decades ago, these were regarded as the relics of uh, Christian scent. Uh, but on closer inspection, they turned out to be the remains of a dwarf hippo. Okay, so you mentioned that Hercules travels around a lot. Where does he go? He travels uh, both in the Far East and also uh, in the Far North. Uh, these, what's uh, the Far East? Well, I mean, it's not Thailand. <laughs> what's, what's the Far East in this context? Well, East for Greeks at the time was um, Black Sea. So yeah. they went through the sea. They went um, up to, as we'll see uh, later on in the Jason, uh, they uh, went up to Colchis. Mm. And uh, it was also the time, this archaic period, uh, so around, uh, let's say, 700 
when uh, also Homer's epics are um, being composed. That was a time when uh, Greeks were spreading out. Mm -hmm. So they had colonies from Marseille, the city in France, this is a, a Greek colony, um, up to the Black Sea. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came in contact with people there, they heard their stories. And uh, they took these stories and uh, made them their own, their own myths. Is there a record about uh, specific stories that they took? I don't know, like uh, stories, uh, you know, chiseled on uh, stone or whatever, carved? Well, there are several stories. Um, some gods uh, come from uh, Eastern gods. For example, Dionysus uh, famously is an Eastern god. Mm. Uh, some very interesting stories that come from the east are those of the Amazons. Ah, okay, but uh, not yet. We're not. We're not there yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Yeah. And Dionysos is, among other things, the god of inebriation and wine and and grapes. I guess it's also associated with where grapes came from, uh, didn't they? Like a lot of the uh, wine grapes are thought to be from uh, Colchis, which I guess means uh, more like Georgia, like really the eastern end of the uh, Black Sea, kind of uh, Transcaucasus uh, uh, reason, re region. Sorry. Yeah, right? yeah, there is also a myth uh, of how Dionysus brought uh, wine to Greece. So um, he had this plant and at first he uh, potted it in the bone of a bird. And then it grew and he potted it in the bone of a lion and then it grew even bigger and then he potted it in the bone of a donkey. And this is why when you drink some wine, you want to sink and when you drink some more, you want to fight. And then you, when you drink a lot, you start behaving like a donkey. Ah, awesome. <laughs> awesome. Shall we move on to the next hero? Yeah, yeah, let's move on to the next hero. Jason, the man who challenges the gods, Medea who betrays a kingdom for love. A castus driven by a lust for power. Hera, goddess and woman, who defies the might of Zeus, king of the gods, who unleashes his fury at rebellious mortals. The Argonauts, caught in the clutches of the towering bronze giant Talos. Jason. Jason, please uh, set the record straight. Uh, yeah, so in Greek is uh, Jason, in English I guess it's Jason. Uh, maybe you can uh, you can start by what you liked in the movie. Yeah, so the movie uh, follows actually surprisingly closely the actual story of Jason. Uh, so we see that at um, the beginning, uh, his uncle usurps the throne and he kills a lot of uh, his family. Zeus, king of the gods of the Greeks, write in the ashes so that I may read the future. I see a great tree at the end of the world, and in its branches there hang the skull and the skin of a ram. They gleam and shine, for it is a prize of the gods, a golden fleece. We've no time for riddles and mysteries. Tell me of tonight. You will conquer tonight. You will overthrow the kingdom of Thessaly. You will kill the king, Aristo, and wear his crown. You will do all these things without fear or wound, because Zeus commands it. It is also foretold that although you will win the throne of Aristo, you will, when Zeus ordains, lose it to one of Aristo's children. Then Aristo will have no children. He has three Pelias, two daughters, Philomela and Bryses, and a son, Jason. Then two daughters and a son will die with their father tonight. Uh, Jason is uh, spared. Again, Jason has a different name. He will later be known as uh, Jason. Uh, Pelias is prophesied that uh, he will be um, lose his throne to a man with uh, one sandal. This is something that we also see in the movie. So uh, Jason is um, raised by the centaur Chiron. Uh, so in the previous movie, Hercules, we had uh, Philoctetus to train these heroes, but in Greek mythology, Chiron the centaur uh, was the one who trained a lot of heroes. The centaur, okay. The centaur, yeah. So Jason grows up, then um, he goes uh, back to Pelias and asks him his uh, crown back. And uh, Pelias, uh, yeah, he cannot exactly refuse 
So he tells him that uh, I will uh, give you the throne, but only if you go and bring back um, these golden fleece. That's so random. Why, 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 why fleece? Why fleece? Um, well, according to one iteration of the myth, it's because um, before revealing himself, he asked Jason, if you were a king and someone wanted to take your throne, what would you have him do? And Jason said, uh, I would send him to bring back the, the fleece. And this is something that uh, maybe a goddess made him say. So th this is one iteration of this. Myth. Like fleece, that's like the, the hide of, uh, of a sheep. What, what, uh... Yeah, so it is um, the hide of a, a ram, the ghoul. A ram. And this is uh, golden. The interpretation of this myth is that uh, maybe people back then they used these uh, fleeces to sieve gold out of rivers and um, uh, then they picked uh, these uh, nuggets from the fleece and maybe this is why it was golden. And, and I suppose here the assignment is simply to make it like super duper difficult. Like it's, it's basically as far away as they could imagine all the way on the other side of the Black Sea and it's uh, heavily guarded. It's like... You can become king if you go and get me uh, the Stanley Cup uh, or something, right? Like you sail across the Atlantic and there you go to whichever NHL team then owns it and, and go and get it or something like that. Like <laughs> far away and impossible, basically, right? Yeah, it's a suicide mission. Yes. Uh, it was interesting when uh, uh, Harlampos, when you said that it, uh, the, the, the movie follows very closely uh, the original story, uh, that got me thinking that this is why this was a boring movie for me because mm. you have to adapt it to a modern audience like uh, mm -hmm. the, the story these stories as they are if you don't adapt the way that you tell the story they just they don't stick because our whole perception of what yeah. stories are is so different but i like that uh, in the earlier hollywood films they actually tried to really just film the story in yeah. the same way that you know we did an episode about uh, robin hood films and the oldest ones are the ones that are closest to the myth because that's what they did back then and then over time it gets kind of weirder and weirder and farther away from the original story but like the original story is like you have to do this and then you have to do this and then you have to do there's no like real arc it's just like a set of challenges one after mm -hmm. the other also like in, in ancient uh, the chinese and japanese stories it's just like it's it's very repetitive and it's mm. just like you beat this one then you beat this one it's like whatever a uh, video game you have to the boss the big boss now yeah i mean the thing with that is for example when we have uh, epics as the iliad or odyssey mm. uh, these were meant to be sung mm -hmm. not to be read or to be acted. So people needed these repetitive things mm -hmm. to remember. The function of many of these uh, myths is to establish the provenance of uh, certain people, people who then can trace back their ancestry or to justify some customs or to justify the claim of some people to a land. Mm -hmm. So this is why for us, they might sound boring, but for the people back then had a different meaning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. That was uh, my point. But wasn't there also a kind of uh, almost like a fan fiction type of thing happening where these stories develop and uh, new things are added to it uh, and kind of this universe gradually expanded? Like, and he also did this and he also did that. And it's kind of, you can kind of freestyle on that. I mean, that that's also the whole thing with the Hercules, Heracles type of thing, like much of the whole Roman pantheon and mythology is basically fan fiction based on the <laughs> on the Greek stories, like oh the the, the Romans were really impressed with the, the Iliad and the Odyssey, and then they were like oh yeah we gotta kind of develop a tie in here, and that's how the Aeneid came about, and okay Aeneas fled Troy, and that's and we are actually descendants from the Trojans, and look how awesome we are, and it's kind of like just this separate story that was invented to fit in the same universe, and then yeah, exactly to justify claims to land mm. and kind of set up provenance right sounds like the book of genesis in the bible absolutely yeah i mean and it's the same kind of age of patriarchs that uh, everybody can claim can claim some descent to yeah yeah at the same time it's very different from uh, what we know from the bible because for example the bible so in abrahamic religions we have one book or some books uh, that have been passed down 
uh, through the ages without, you know, great, once they were uh, settled, they were passed down without great changes. But uh, in Greek mythology, there is no book. Uh, there is no one church. So people make up their own stories and you end up through the ages having all these many, many different stories which sometimes are completely cont contradictory. That's why we say according to one iteration of the myth because other myths want uh, the same hero doing something very different under the same circumstances. It's a bit like the comics uh, universe. And I also, what I like about mm. it also is that there's like special guest stars, like here in the Jason, uh, Hercules also pops up for yeah. a bit, does something. And they're like, okay, this is, uh, on this episode, Hercules uh, participates and then he leaves again. Yeah, it's like uh, the, the Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. He assembles uh, the Avengers. The Avengers. He says Avengers assemble and then they <laughs> all come from all corners of Greece. They're known for other deeds. What ship is strong enough? to reach to the edge of the world. What crew brave enough to sail in her? I shall tell the shipbuilders of Greece that the richest cargo in the world waits in Colchis. The Golden Fleece is worth a kingdom, and I shall say that only the strongest ship ever built will survive the voyage. The athletes of Greece are proud. I'll tell them that only the best can expect a place in the most perilous voyage in history. I shall announce the games, invite the strongest and bravest of the Greeks, no greater game shall ever be held. So they ensemble and then they start off. And then there is one um, episode which I don't know if it would probably not be so appealing for Hollywood, but uh, it might help to keep audience interested, which is that about the Lemnian woman. The w which woman? The Lemnian woman. Do you know Lemnian? that? Lemnian? Yeah. No, no. So Lemnos is an island in uh, Aegean. And uh, that was uh, one of the first stops of the Argonauts. So in Lemnos, there existed women and men, obviously, but the men somehow got the idea that their women stunk. Okay. okay. So instead, they took a woman from Thrace. Oh, okay. And that didn't go well with the Lemnian women, so <laughs> they killed them all. Okay. Uh, so when the Argonauts go there, so the, they are these um, uh, muscular young men that land on an island where there are no men for quite some time. And at first the Lemnian women think that yeah, maybe we should drive them away, maybe give them some wine and they will go away. But then someone has the idea that we can procreate with them and then we can breed the next generation of Lemnian. So they do exactly that. Um, so each of the Argonauts uh, has some women and they have children. I love the psychology here. I mean, uh, this, this ancient world was a world with a lot of sailing between different islands. A lot of men being stuck on boats together for a long time. And they tell each other, well, there must be an island with just women. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they want us. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, so, uh, who who are the people who are uh, you know propagating and spreading these stories? Do we know who were the people? Mm. Like, who were the storytellers, or the where 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 was it recorded? How was it spread? So, the epic poems are composed um, by the I IV, which are people who travel around. They go into different uh, palaces and houses and they sing. They basically entertain people. And um, they do not do not necessarily sing uh, the whole uh, Iliad, let's say, from uh, start to finish, because it's quite long. They might, uh, maybe your host would tell you, sing uh, this rhapsody uh, from there to there. So they sing that and uh, that's how they earn their living. Uh, later on, the these stories uh, are written down, and they also become the canon for uh, Greeks for their education. So Greek children have to learn them by heart, mm. they have to recite them, they have to study them. How about today? Today, well, in uh, school we are also taught um, the Iliad and the Odyssey, and we're also taught some uh, ancient Greek theater uh, that has to do with uh, such mythological um, Tales, for example, that of uh, Antigone. We also had that here. <laughs> Can you actually uh, read the uh, classical Greek? Uh, like, uh, let's say, if you had uh, 
the Iliad here? Could you could you just follow along? What's go- how how different is the uh, mm. classical language from modern Greek? Ancient Greek uh, didn't remain static throughout the ages. I mean, Greek in general, but also ancient Greek. The Homeric epics are written in a different dialect than uh, what people in uh, Bronze Age Greece must have uh, spoke. And also people in uh, classical Athens, let's say, they uh, spoke differently than uh, in the Homeric era. And uh, people also in the Hellenistic or later periods, in the Roman period, when they comment uh, on that, they also speak differently. Uh, Of course, uh, in modern Greece we have our own version of Greek. So uh, we use the same alphabet, and uh, if I were to read, uh, for example, Hellenistic Greek, I would understand quite a lot. If I were to read uh, Homer, I might get the general meaning, but it's not like um, without training that I could just go and uh, translate everything accurately. Hmm. This is what's cool about the Bible, because we have the same language almost. Like because because Hebrew was frozen in time for two thousand years, modern Hebrew is very close to ancient Hebrew. Like you can read the Bible mm-hmm. and understand like ninety percent, if mm-hmm. not more. So when they wrote down, for example, the Iliad, and then it became basically teaching materials during the Hellenistic period. Like I guess there's these stories where uh, Alexander the Great, for supposedly, always went traveling with his own Iliad with him as kind of like something to study and be inspired by. Uh, But then when he was reading it, I guess for him it was already kind of archaic language in the way that maybe you might read in English the King James Version of the Bible and it looks super duper old. That must have been the case for them already, right? Yeah, it was uh, ancient uh, history, basically. So you have this age of uh, heroes, Again, you have these Bronze Age uh, civilizations, and then they collapse throughout the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. And then in the Archaic period, when uh, a lot of these stories are composed or written down, um, this is centuries later, and these stories have been passed down generations to generations and also changed. Oh, by the way, something that uh, that you said earlier uh, about uh, the lions and that they were still around and the uh, great big brutalist architecture of Mycenae, I guess there's also there uh, a point of evidence that's that's pointed to for the existence of lions in Greece at the time, which is like the lion's gate at uh, Mycenae, where you have these like these big blocks of stone and then these two lions that are over the gate. And uh, the idea is that, well, obviously people have, must have kind of known about lions uh, still at the time because maybe they were uh, still around in isolated areas or had been until very, very recently, right? Yeah, we see depictions of lions in many pieces of uh, Greek art. And not only Greek, but also Greek art. And uh, that also goes to show that uh, humans have had a huge impact on their environment mm. way before the modern industrial period. So we've been hunting, hunting animals into extinction from, uh, well, basically the Paleolithic era mm. up to today. This is not something um, new, it's just something that is more intense now that we have the technology. Mm. Yeah. It's also less heroic now. I mean, at the time it was kind of <laughs> badass to be able to kill a lion. Now even the sons of Donald Trump yes, can so. shoot a lion and it's it's not sport anymore. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to Troy because you're already uh, f- 50 minutes in. Uh, yeah, so in Troy, what happens? What happens in Troy? What happens in Troy stays in Troy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, the dream, the dream team is assembled uh, to take the city of Troy. And this is actually maybe the first of these stories that have a discernible basis in history, more so than Hercules or Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We know where Troy was. We know Mm -hmm. roughly when the war was or when the wars were. There's like different layers, isn't there? Uh, For long, people believed, uh, so in the more uh, modern era, let's say after antiquity, people believed that these were just uh, fables, uh, tales that people made up. Uh, but then uh, Heinrich Schliemann actually found Troy. Uh, he also sort of destroyed it. He blew it up <laughs> because archaeology was uh, like that back uh, 150 years ago. And he wasn't actually an, a professional archaeologist. 
we also found these uh, palaces in uh, Mycenae, where uh, the Greeks came from. And uh, in Troy, they found also evidence um, that there was some warfare there and there also some Greek influence, so weapons that were more usual in uh, Greece. And it's in Turkey, today's Turkey, right? It's in modern day Turkey. It is uh, Troy situated uh, at the mouth of the Dardanelles. Mm-hmm. So this was a passage and uh, whoever held Troy, could, they could basically tax ships that they wanted to move between Mediterranean and Black Sea and they could become very rich. Also in the film, they incorporated that. Some say they can't be conquered. Old King Priam thinks he's untouchable behind his high walls. He thinks the sun god will protect him. But the gods protect only the strong. If Troy falls, I control the Aegean. So Agamemnon is driven by, um, by his lust to conquer. And of course, this would be a very profitable enterprise. Uh, I mean, it sort of reminds me the thing with um, Rome and Carthage, uh, that they were antagonizing each other. So Troy seems to have been um, a Hittite city. Really? A Hittite? I didn't know that. Okay. So how different are the Hittites from the Greeks uh, at that time? Oh, well, quite different. So they speak a different language, even though in um, the Iliad they're portrayed as uh, speaking the same language. Mm -hmm. That sort of, again, reminds me of these American films that everybody speaks flawless English (laughs) and they can communicate with each other. It seems that Troy was a border town. It was where Mm -hmm. they came in contact with the Greeks. We also see before Troy, we see we have a myth where Hercules sacked Troy. He gets around. <laughs> By himself or with an army? Yeah, himself and some people. As I said, Hercules was frequently followed by other warriors. But this spe- speaks to the events that actually took place around that time. Again, this late Bronze Age collapse. A lot of different uh, cities were sacked and then later on explanations were necessary for why there is all these ruins and and this is actually throughout the eastern mediterranean i mean it's uh, here uh, the the ruins of troy need to be explained just like for example the ruins of uh, jericho needed to be explained in the bible this is the same kind of events probably where the eastern mediterranean was basically raided by a type of vikings the sea peoples and we don't quite know who they were but we know that they made a mess and actually the thinking has started to become more and more that maybe the greeks are part of the sea peoples or were in turn pushed to start moving around uh, by the knock-on effect of these sea peoples who who we don't quite know maybe they maybe they came from for example sardinia more the western mediterranean we don't quite know but a lot of people got into boats and started laying siege to cities and burning them down and leaving traces of greek-like remains also so for example in the levant there's the the philistines never heard of them and <laughs> and uh recently there's been uh, digs to uh see okay well who were these people then and what they found was that the uh, pottery looked kind of Mycenaean and also the uh, burial practices as well. And now they've been doing some ancient DNA on a, a burial site, which I think was in Ashkelon or somewhere there. South of Israel on the coast. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that where the, sit, where the Philistines kind of were, right? So the idea is that they too were kind of like Greeks getting onto boats and causing trouble <laughs> elsewhere. Um, during that time, right? Uh, yeah. We're talking about about 3,000 years ago. Yeah, so this is an age where uh, there is a lot of trade going on. And uh, when this trade collapses, all these civilizations also collapse. We also see that uh, in Greece, so all these uh, palaces in the Mycenae and elsewhere, they also collapse. And then we enter the so-called Greek uh, Middle Ages, where we don't have a lot of uh, written sources. now whether it is because um, they were not um, rescued or because it didn't exist, that's another matter. But we don't know that much about uh, this period. Uh, I I read that uh, Achilles uh, has changed, his character has changed over time. How much do these characters change uh, 
from the oldest versions that we have to the most recent? So as we have different people um, recounting these myths differently, for example, we have um, uh, later Greek writers or Roman writers adding labors uh, to their feats, adding um, also mythological explanations for different things. The omens are gathering. The directive is clear. Fight for your country, that's the only directive. The last time the high priest spoke to us, he prophesied a great victory for Troy. We won a great victory, let him speak. What course of action do you recommend? The gods favor our cause. Now is the time to destroy the Greek army. And uh, things like uh, murder of enemies or whatever perceived, uh, you know, everybody as their enemies, uh, or rape, which is uh, a theme that features prominently in all these myths. Uh, so uh, obviously today, and for a good reason, uh, you couldn't make a movie where your protagonist would uh, rape a lot of women. <laughs> but this is something that wasn't much of an issue, or, you know, an issue in this way that it is today in ancient Greece. Mm. And how, how do you see uh, uh, the Achilles character in Troy? Did you like this portrayal? Yeah, I think it was uh, very good. I really like the whole movie. Uh, I mean, the script is by David Benioff. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It departs from the myth in several places, but I think it is quite faithful to the spirit of the myth. Uh, one thing that is very interesting for me is that um, when Homer talks in the Iliad uh, about uh, Greeks, he never actually uses that word. So it is an age where the Greek identity is still being forged. Mm. Uh, he uses other names. He calls them Achaeans. He calls them Argives, he calls them Danans, uh, but only one or two times he calls them Hellenes, mm. which is the endonym that Greeks call themselves. So mm. it's like Germany and Deutschland. We never call ourselves uh, Greeks. Uh, we call ourselves Hellenes. Uh, the official name is uh, Hellenic Republic of mm. the Greek state. Mm. Different people call Greeks by different names even today. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, I would like to ask Rutger, how do you call Greeks in Dutch? Uh, Grieke. Grieke, okay. Yeah. And uh, in uh, Hebrew, how do you call Greeks? Yavan. Yeah? Yavan, okay. So you see that <laughs> these do not match. So this has to do with which Greeks did people meet first. Yeah. So those coming from the east would meet first the Ionians. Ah, boom. <laughs> <laughs> so those that uh, lived in Asian Minor. Mm -hmm. And if you were a Roman, you would, uh, they first met um, a tribe in Epirus, which were the Greeks. So everybody after that were Greeks. So, but you guys also did the same thing to other peoples, right? Calling mm -hmm. a bunch of people the same thing. Those are barbarians. <laughs> yeah, Mesopotamia, all the people living there between those rivers, whatever. Babylonians, Assyrians. Yeah, it's quite interesting that even a lot of people and countries are called by Greek or Roman names, even though they have their own. Yeah. So the Greek world at the time was very uh, fragmented in a way that you don't often see uh, just because of the physical geography where the different city states are each kind of in their own, you know, facing the water with kind of mountains around it or on islands. I guess these stories played a huge role also in kind of forging a shared uh, identity, didn't they? Like the, you, had, you had these storytellers traveling around and that's kind of how this consciousness grew of their, this larger cultural sphere, even though there's separate city-states that are at war with each other, usually, often. Yes, definitely. And even uh, um, people who were at the periphery of the Greek world uh, they use these stories to prove that they were Greeks, to mm -hmm. prove that they were, you know, they belong to these people. I, I have a question about uh, the concept of uh, honor and pride in these uh, stories about uh, ancient Greek heroes. So it's not like honor, uh, chivalrous honor. Mm -hmm. It's more like uh, they get triggered a lot mm -hmm. by yeah. slights. Yeah, so whenever someone uh, says something or does something that they don't like, uh, they go in a fight and usually our hero uh, wins. But yes, you're, you're very right. They're not heroes in the modern sense. They are larger than life, 
but uh, they're not necessarily good. What about Wonder Woman? Zeus's son grew envious of mankind and sought to corrupt his father's creation. This was Ares, the god of war. Ares poisoned men's hearts with jealousy and suspicion. He turned them against one another, and war ravaged the earth. So, the gods created us, the Amazons, to influence men's hearts with love and restore peace to the earth. Zeus grew up with Amazons. Amazons, that's another myth which is rooted in fact. Because we have uh, these uh, stories about women from the East uh, associated uh, also with uh, Scythians. Scythians mm. were a nomadic people that lived in um, this Eurasian steppe. Like horse people? Horse people, yeah. They rode horses, they fought with um, arrows, bows and arrows, and uh, they did a lot of conquering. And also their women partook in uh, war. So it seems that uh, this uh, bow, arrow, horse had the um, um, effect of, uh, you know, equalizing. It's not spear thrusting, you know, right. thrusting its other uh, shields against its other, you know, like the Greek phalanx. Mm. You just move around. And of course, a woman can equally well um, uh, shoot an arrow as a man. Well, I, I heard that there was a little bit of an adaptation. I heard uh, it, uh, there's part of the myths where the Amazons cut off one of their breasts in order to uh, shoot arrows more easily. But some, for some reason, uh. that's not being depicted in Wonder Woman. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that even if that were true, they would not depict it. But actually, this was an idea that um, a Greek writer had when he tried to give... Um, an etymology for the word Amazon. Uh, so the word Amazon is not Greek, but he tried anyways. And uh, he said that uh, it comes from some, so the A means uh, without, and uh, Mazon maybe because he reminded them the word for breast. It was adopted by several people, but it was also contested back in um, ancient uh, times. Of course, this doesn't, this didn't happen because uh, it doesn't hinder you in uh, throwing an arrow in any way. <laughs> And also because in uh, depictions of Amazons in Greek art, we never see one-breasted women. They always have two breasts. And they also wear pants, yeah. which is uh, something else that is very useful for horse people. Yes. Mm. But um, yeah, not so for uh, Greeks. They wear different clothes. Pants were for barbarians. How are they, the, the Amazons? Are they like wild? Are they uh, good, evil? dangerous uh, heroic uh, it's, 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 it sounds a little bit like orientalism like ooh, those mm -hmm. uh, those women from the east oh. <laughs> let's talk about them while yeah. we're on our boat <laughs> 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 yeah so they are very exotic they um, um they are said to hate men or um well with all the raping i suppose that makes sense uh, mutilate young boys or make their men um, uh, do these female jobs. Sounds like projection. Like, mm. uh, yeah. There is a place yeah. where yeah, they will do. They are doing to, to, to us what we're doing to them every day. The bizarre our... world, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, upside down. And of course, that's horrible because nobody wants to be treated like a woman <laughs> in St. <Saint laughs> Greeks because the place of women is uh, not good at all. Trevor, what the hell were you thinking? Oh, Bringing a I'm woman sorry, into the council? The intel that I brought back is time sensitive. Uh, but this is very far from the truth because, um, as Andrian Mayer, she's uh, a class assistant, she has also investigated um, Amazon, she has investigated all these ancient robots, like the Talos that uh, we saw in the Jason, and also um, these, uh, the connection of um, fossils with um, ancient Greek myths. Mm. So anyway, um, in her book about Amazons, she has a very nice expression, says that uh, the Amazons, the real Amazons, were women who made both war and love. We also see them being uh, mothers in some uh, myths. Uh, sometimes we see them in myths uh, only pairing with uh, uh, humans, Greeks, in Greek myths, uh, only temporarily, just to procreate. But of course, the real uh, Scythians uh, lived in uh, groups uh, where both uh, sexes uh, <laughs> coexisted. Mm. 
The uh, word uh, Amazon is supposedly uh, derives from uh, Iranian languages, where Hamazan means like a warrior. And I guess that kind of also points to this uh, Scythian uh, horse people kind of origin, because uh, a lot of these cultures, there's like been different iterations of horse people sort of, you know, on the, the east, northeast shore of the Black Sea. And a lot of them spoke Iranian languages, like the uh, Sarmatians uh, that we see in uh, the, the King Arthur that mm-hmm. we uh, recently talked about. They are also these uh, Iranian language uh, horse people. We also know from archaeological evidence that uh, they uh, had tattoos. And uh, this is something that we might also see in some uh, Greek art. And they also uh, used, uh, so the peoples of these steps, they also uh, used drugs, Mm -hmm. uh, mostly hasis and opium. And this is something that, again, we see both in archaeology and in ancient Greek uh, sources. Mm. How how are the drugs uh, get incorporated into the stories? People are going through some psychedelic uh, experiences? Well, there's the the island of the lotus eaters in uh, the Odyssey. Uh, and I guess there's like uh, these stories about um, oracles that were supposedly uh, under the influence of some, uh, of some drugs while they did their uh, prognostications. Yeah. yeah, like Pythia in uh, Delphi when she uh, munched on, uh, on laurel leaves and uh, also she inhaled all these... Um, smoke although like i read uh, uh, a, a story of an uh, experimental archaeologist who was uh, trying to see okay how high do i get if, <laughs> on laurel leaves and it didn't work <laughs> no effect okay. i want to say something about the second the uh, wonder woman story so out of all these stories all the movies that we talked about the the part that was impossible for me to suspend my disbelief wasn't like with gods and heroes and monsters it's just at the end of the movie gal gadot wonder woman she's talking to some guy and she ch- she basically chats him up and tells him even you look good <laughs> and he's just like uh, talking casually and then he says uh, okay bye <laughs> like, <laughs> no, you don't ask for her phone number. Look at her. Look at her. Are you crazy? This was like no. This is the most unrealistic part of all the stories. She starts talking to him. She makes conversation. She tells him he looks good. Then just bye. Yeah. No. Uh, that killed it, right? <laughs> yeah. And we know for a fact that he's not married. Okay, we know that because we know the character hmm. killed everything. <laughs> Sorry, just talking to myself. <laughs> It's all right. It's just that it's wonderful. It's so many things. Yeah. I know what you mean. I like your, I like your outfit. You like, thanks. You're my friends, you know? <clears throat> they kind of tease me about it, but it works, right? You look great. Thank you. <laughs> You just made my day. Happy holidays. See you around. That made me a bit uncomfortable because I was thinking the whole time that, uh, you know, she's having sex with her dead boyfriend in the body of this guy but isn't that a bit questionable um yes. but then again as i said in uh, in these stories the heroes uh, rape a lot so yeah. if we follow that concept of what a hero is and uh, mm. wonder yeah. woman <laughs> is like that but but then again yeah it's it's somewhat problematic or, or okay, but other than that other than that did you recognize anything uh, greek uh, hero e in her character diana She's like naive and very righteous. Is that anything like uh, in the stories? Well, the the Greek heroes were not uh, so naive. So that's uh, not uh, something that uh, you would see in an ancient Greek myth. Uh, And also, I have the impression that in the first film, you know, Ares is basically devil. I am not your enemy, Diana. I am the only one who truly knows you. 
And who truly knows them as you now do? They have always been and always will be weak, cruel, selfish, and capable of the greatest horrors. All I ever wanted was for the gods to see how evil my father's creation was. And uh, Zeus is more or less, uh, uh, you know, God. Yeah, capital and, G, uh, God, yeah. Yeah. So uh, this was not at all how it was in ancient Greece. Zeus can do terrible things. And uh, Ares is not, uh, he's a more morally ambiguous character. He's not evil in any case. It's also that there is no such uh, uh, fight between the gods for um, uh, dominance. It's more like between gods and titans or between gods and giants, as we uh, spoke about earlier. I, I guess that's obviously a, a Christian influence because the ruler of the underworld must be the Satan or something like that. When yeah. in Greek mythology, there was, well, there was the underworld and somebody needs to be in charge. And that, that's Hades, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's a good thing that uh, that people now don't get offended anymore about uh, you know if you not like the Bible like there are some people who take the uh, ancient uh, weird stories really seriously three thousand years later yeah there's no protests uh, in front of the uh, movie theaters about the uh, misrepresentation of uh, of uh, Ares which which is very insulting Ares was also uh, Mars right under the Romans and obviously not evil there was many temples devoted to Mars because the Romans likes warfare so <laughs> yeah I was thinking about that because some people uh, in modern day Greece do not like these um, Hollywood movies because they change the myths I mean I, I respect it but I never understood that because uh, in my view these stories were constantly changed yeah. by ancient Greeks themselves yeah. they are meant to have different um, different uh, narrative, different uh, iterations. Actually, Ares is associated with the Amazons. For example, uh, the the belt of uh, Hippolyta, we see Hippolyta in Wonder Woman, uh, and um, one of the labors of Hercules, one of his last one, is to go and um, take this belt. Mm. Uh, but this belt was uh, given to her by Ares. Okay, and does he manage to take the belt, I assume? Uh, yes, he does. So he goes there, and by this time he's so famous that, uh, and beautiful that Hippolyta supposedly says, Oh, I love you, just take it. And then Hera doesn't like that, so she spreads the rumor that uh, the Greeks are trying to kidnap Hippolyta, so there is a fight breaking out. and uh, Fake Greeks, news. Uh, fake news. <laughs> and Greeks kill uh, Amazons. So in in the end of uh, the second uh, Wonder Woman uh, movie, she's like, uh, you know, in the bat. Like, what am I going to do next? And then there's like a police siren. And then she, she goes to work. So like, all these uh, heroes, especially the American heroes, uh, like you see the meme with uh, Spider-Man uh, following the police chasing the bad guys. So the police are also the heroes. But I was thinking like, there's a siren, so maybe she needs to go and save the, the citizens from violent <laughs> police officers <laughs> who just are going now on their way to kick their asses. I wish that would have been like the, the final part of the movie. She's uh, saving the, the people uh. <laughs> against the monsters. Yeah, ah, you were, yeah, talk a little bit about monsters because uh, that's, uh, that's your thing, no? Yep. So the monsters in all the movies. The monsters, okay, which uh, monster do you want to discuss? Well, there's, there's Pegasus, for example, in Hercules. Mm. Pegasus is a monster? Well, it's, it's a, a cryptozoological uh, species. <laughs> okay, go on. Pegasus. Uh, Pegasus is not from Hercules story. So Disney borrowed that uh, from another story. Uh, Pegasus was actually related to two other Greek heroes. Mm -hmm. The first is uh, Perseus, who beheaded Medusa, uh, this woman with uh, live venomous snakes on her head instead of hair. Uh, it turns you to stone. No. Yeah, yeah, that would turn you to stone. So Pegasus sprung from uh, her cut body, head. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah, Athena, the goddess, uh, guides Bellerophon, another hero, to tame Pegasus and use him to kill Chimera. And Chimera is this other monster that has uh, the body or the head of a lion. 
and it also has another head of a goat on, the back, uh, on its yeah. back and uh, also the tail is a snake and he kills that um, he, it also spits fire so he cannot go near it so instead what he does is put a piece of uh, lead on his um, on his spear and then throw it in Chimera's uh, uh, throat then the lead melts because of the heat and then Chimera chokes uh. Yeah, and he also fought uh, the Amazons with um, with Pegasus by throwing uh, boulders at them. What was the beef? Oh, th- there's always something. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, he used Pegasus to to bomb the Amazons. It was the uh, air force of the time. Yeah. It's very different from the stupid, uh, silly Pegasus uh, in the movie. You probably don't remember Pegasus, but you two go way back, son. <laughs> Pegasus! He's a magnificent horse with the brain of a bird. And I don't know, Pegasus like they're majestic. Like why make uh, make him dumb? I didn't understand it. I loved Pegasus. Pegasus's Pegasi? Pegasi? That's Latin. More monsters. There's uh, the Hydra who's uh, you cut off one head and two grow back. In the myth, uh, at least uh, in the myths that I read about, uh, it's not clear that it has many heads, as in uh, Hydra. Uh, but Hydra is definitely in uh, Heracles um, myth. And the, and the Hydra meme has made it into the Marvel uh, universe. Hill Hydra. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Hydra is uh, has nine heads, and one of them is... Um, uh, immortal and he's also a poisonous snake uh, yeah of course when he cuts a head to spring mm. so that's sort of um, uh, impossible to do so then he cuts all these heads and then he has his nephew Yolos who later marries Meg to burn the head so they don't grow back and then he cuts uh, uh, the last head which is immortal and buries it under stone so that's something that he also did in the film oh. okay so Utre, you wanna sum things up uh, yeah, important uh, fact uh, here, uh, Hercules 1997 mm. on IMDb 7.3, Jason mm. Argonauts also IMDb 7.3, mm. uh, Troy on IMDb 7.3, <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Woman 7.4. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, and the <laughs> latest one has uh, 5.4. Yeah. Mm. The second one is a, is a, is a children's movie. If you just uh, come uh, watch it from that perspective, then you can enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me let me sum up this conversation. So, these ancient stories that are three thousand years old and more still have new adaptations and iterations in our twenty-first century culture. It's just a staple of Western culture, and it retains some of the old archetypes which are still relevant to the way that we see the world today and the way that we describe it uh, in stories. But some things have to change in order to make them uh, palatable uh, to our uh, modern sensibilities. The fact that it's uh, no longer a religion that people follow uh, allows us to look at the stories as they are and uh, just make out of them whatever we want, keep them alive. Uh, that's cool, I believe. So thank you, Haralampos. I guess one much. more thing to add. Some uh-huh. heroes are still active. For example, Ajax, 64% <laughs> ball possession this season. Very good, very strong. <laughs> so pr- precision passes uh, this season, 85%, top scoring in the uh, Division of Honor. So uh, very strong. <laughs> okay. So thank you, Hara Lampos. Thank you very much. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. Awesome. So did we. Uh, well, nice. We had a fabulous time, and I want to do it again, Hara Lampos, with another uh, angle uh, that includes uh, Greek myths. Yes. Sure. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If you'd like to become a member of the show, you can go to ourpodacademy.com and uh, check out ways uh, there to uh, join our uh, community. I want to thank our existing uh, members for their uh, sustained uh, support. It's awesome. And uh, we'll see you all next time. We post every Monday. So see you next Monday. Bye, everybody. Bye.